everything in your life that you like and it comes to you is because you have a program to support that that's wonderful that means that's great it's going to come to you because that program is bringing it to you but in contrast this is the one that's important anything you work hard to accomplish anything you struggle over to make it happen anything you put a lot of effort in i want this i'm going to work like crazy I, i'm going to get this uh, my first question is why are you working so hard and the answer is very simple anything you're struggling to try to accomplish whether it's health or love uh, relationships whatever it is if you're struggling it represents a simple fact your subconscious programming doesn't support that conclusion so the fact is what are my programs look at your struggle and wherever you're struggling the struggle is not because the universe won't provide for you the struggle is an internal job the struggle is you're trying to overcome previous programming that prevents you to go to that destination so the wonderful part about this understanding is you don't have to, to review your life you can look right now at this one moment just look in your head and say what are the things that I keep trying to get and they they seem to be elusive I can't get them they're always out of reach I say there their universe is not holding back it's your own invisible subconscious behavior and once you understand where the issues are and you start to really focus on the point that it's not the universe that's providing the trouble it's myself you have the first inclination the first idea the first understanding of how to change your life because now you know exactly what issue is confronting you and again if you understand it's an internal issue then you and this is the most important part otherwise this would be the worst seminar you ever heard uh, the most important part is this you can change the programming you can rewrite your subconscious programs and why is that relevant if you took the wishes and desires of the conscious mind and use that as a program to put the beliefs into the subconscious mind it's the most exciting and liberating thing you can ever do in your life you know why because once it's in the subconscious program 95 percent of the day without you even thinking about it your mind will take you to that direction and that is your freedom well a habit is a redundant set of automatic unconscious thoughts behaviors and emotions that's acquired through repetition the habit is when you've done th done something so many times that your body now knows how to do it better than your mind so if you think about it people wake up in the morning uh, they begin to think about their problems those problems are circuits of memories in the brain each one of those memories are connected to people and things at certain times and places and if the brain is a record of the past the moment they start their day they're already thinking in the past each one of those memories has an emotion emotions are the end product of past experiences so the moment they recall those memories of their problems they all of a sudden feel unhappy they feel sad they feel pain now how you think and how you feel creates your state of being so the person's entire state of being when they start their day is in the past so what does that mean? The familiar past will sooner or later be predictable future. So if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny and you can't think greater than how you feel or feelings have become the means of thinking, by very definition of emotions, you're thinking in the past. And for the most part, you're going to keep creating the same life. So then people grab their cell phone, they check their WhatsApp, they check their texts, they check their emails, they check Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, they tweet something, they do Instagram, uh, they check the news, and now they feel really connected to everything that's known in their life. And then they go through a series of routine behaviors. They get out of bed on the same side, they go to the toilet, they get a cup of coffee, they take a shower, they get dressed, they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, and that becomes the routine, and it becomes like a program. So now they've lost their free will to a program, and there's no unseen hand doing it to them. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. So 
Now, 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a computer program. So then a person can say with their 5% of their conscious mind, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be free. But the body is on a whole different program. So then how do you begin to make those changes? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And that's where meditation comes in because you can teach people through practice how to change their brain waves, slow them down. And when they do that properly, they do enter the operating system where they can begin to make some really important changes. So um, most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis, you know, they wait for loss, uh, some tragedy to make up their mind to change. And my message is why wait? And, and you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. And I think right now, the cool thing is that people are waking up. A very scary situation when you are on one side of the door and your mind is racing because on the other side of that door, it could be no one. It could be four guys with four AK-47s. That, that door you're about to open could be booby-trapped. So once you open it, boom, your legs are gone. So there's a thousand things you think about when you're the first guy, second guy, third guy, getting ready to go in a room and flood it. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. And that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I, would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, op get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're going to die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane, every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas, good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military, like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dial line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You gotta accept that. And that's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior. So in an ideal life for me is a life, and this applies to a company, an organization, an institution for me, is an ideal life is when we all have a head, a heart, and a hand, all three elements together, working in alignment. Without one or the other, we start to lose something. If you only have a head and a heart, you'll find that life is stable. And defined. Yeah, so. yeah, sure, 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 sure. So ahead is the clarity of vision, what you want, knowing what you want, the way you picture life, and being able to navigate and make the decisions to get there. That's a good head. A good heart is being able to understand what your intuition and heart wants, being able to connect and tap into that, understanding deeper and beyond the vision you may have painted for yourself. So I often say to people that you'll get to where you want in life, just not in the way you imagined. And that's because the path that's paved up and down is far different to the path we pave. So you can have a great head and a great vision and a great mission and know where you want to go. But if your heart's not able to have that resilience and be able to adapt and, and have compassion and care and all of that, then, then you're not going to be able to make the toughest decisions without your heart. But to be able to realize that we need to care and be sustainable and long lasting requires a heart. And a hand is that service, wanting to pass that on, that which you have, wanting to give it forward, pay it forward. The idea of serving with what you have I often say to people, your passion is for you, your purpose is for others. Your passion makes you happy, but when you use your passion to make a difference in someone else's life, that's a service, that's a purpose, and that's the hand. I'm gonna give you Mark Cuban rule number one. And whenever you forget this rule, you're already out of business. 
in every business, sales cures all. Has anybody ever heard of a business that had zero sales that was successful? Doesn't happen. Yet a lot of people start their business thinking, I have a great idea. I'm going to do this. This is amazing. I'm going to go raise money. I just sold this idea. And then it comes back and it's like, okay, you've got to sell that product or you've got to sell that service. That's the first and the main key to a successful business. What's the constant in life? Because we are just here on this planet to go through that cycle and they go like, that's a waste of time. Hmm. It really is. So what's the constant in life? What, what is it in life that doesn't change? And I wanted to find that. And that was really the quest of my spiritual path. Here's the two challenges of life. Number one, the development of our full potential. That's challenge number one. Challenge number two is the wise use of all our resources. That sums up life in general. The development of all of our potential and the wise use of all our resources. One of our resources is time and we talked about that. Well, this is your life. This is your career. This is your craft. This is your service to humanity. Why would you, why would you be checking your phone? And if you look at a victim, if you lo look at most people on the planet, they're literally hooked to a white screen. They are s s wasting their human potential hooked into some social platform that is creating empires for other people. The day you got the diploma, you just got recognized for the success that you already were. Now that's very essential because so many times people have a, have a tendency to devalue the moment today. What they do is they greatly value the destination. And so they kind of talk about, well, when I get there, or if I arrive there, or when I do that, or when I accomplish this. And they don't understand that success is a daily thing. And I'm here to share with you that the secret of success is determined by your daily agenda. We also have to play the infinite game. It's not about being ranked number one. It's not about having more followers on Twitter than your friends. It's not about outdoing anyone. It's about how to outdo yourself. It's not about selling more books or getting more TED views than somebody else. It's about how to make sure that the work that you're producing is better than the work you produced before. You are your competition. And that is what ensures you stay in the game the longest. And that is what ensures you find joy. Because the joy comes not from comparison, but from advancement. We've got to see ourselves the way we want to be, and then we have to live with it. People should say, you should slow down. That's a bunch of crap. We should speed up. When we get into the success zone, everything in our life starts to change. You only have to know two things. You have to know where you're going, and you have to know that you're going to get there. Take your pen and write out how you want to live, and always start by writing, I'm so happy and grateful, now that. And the second you write it, you've got it intellectually. The moment you impress it upon your emotional mind, you've got it emotionally. And it's only a period of time till it manifests on the physical plane. Yeah. Spirit works from a higher to a lower potential. We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay, trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day, it's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word, it's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit. and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. See, it has nothing to do with getting. People always think, oh, I want to get this or I want to get this. It's really allowing yourself to accept, which is a different concept. When you're not having something that you want, it's because on some level, you're not allowing yourself to accept it. 
But you see, life is here for us. It's here for us and it's here to support us in every way. But remember, what we give out, we get back. So if we're stingy with life, then life will be stingy with us.